My name is Ben Lever from the Air Force Research Lab at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Today I have with me a Puma UAV unmanned air vehicle. It's used by Air Force Special Forces and Special Forces for other services for missions where they want to do intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance type of missions. So they might want to be watching a person of interest uh, as an example. They like the platform because it can be hand launched so they can carry it into, into the field in pieces and then assemble it and then hand launch it. It looks a little bit like launching a football. One of the challenges with the vehicle, or I guess I should say, there, there's a camera on the bottom of it. That's how they do the surveillance. It's, it's right under this part of the vehicle. The challenge with the vehicle today is that it's the, the flight time is limited by the battery. This is a lithium ion battery. It's similar to what you would have in your laptop or your cell phone. This particular battery limits the flight time to about two hours depending on weather condition and, some, and other factors. What we're able to show is that we could integrate these flexible solar cells on, onto the wings. So these are solar cells made by a company in Chicago called Microlink. They have an efficiency of about 30%, which is, which is really impressive. We, we integrated these solar cells onto the wings. We designed these power electronics to interface the solar cells to the battery. We could increase the flight endurance by about 75%. So instead of having a two hour flight with the battery, we showed that we could get a three and a half hour flight with that same battery. Or we also did a test with a three hour battery where we had five hours of flight endurance. Uh, we're doing a follow on program with the Army where we're gonna embed these solar cells directly into the wing so we can get to a durable version that, that's actually being tested by the Army right now and will then be tested by our Air Force customer. That's a great question. So it's actually been a long time in, in the development. I, I mentioned these, these solar, these flexible solar cells. These are based on what has, is used by the space community on satellites. So I would say in, in the last, um, maybe three or four years ago, they demonstrated the ability to do these flexible solar panels. That's about the time we started the project. Uh, we, did, we did a flight test on this vehicle uh, about a year ago. So maybe maybe three or four years to, to, to demonstrate the, what you see here. it would take to implement these into the regular Army Force or the, or the Air Force Force? Yeah, so right, the Army and the Air Force, they're both interested. One of the challenges today is the cost of the solar cells. So I, I think it, as the volumes go up, the demand increases, that, that that will drive down the cost and make this the platform more affordable for, for the DoD. But the Army and Air Force are actually testing it right now. So if those tests go well, it could be actually very soon that they could be used in real operational environments. What, what would you say is the, is the overall cost of having uh, one, of, one of these whole systems? So I, I guess what I can say is, is that for our project, the, the solar panels increase the cost of the vehicle by about 50%. And what we'd like to do is get that down to about a 10% increase. Sure, I, I can just add that we're doing a follow-on project um, on, a, on a new platform that's going to have a fuel cell, a battery, and a solar panel. So here I'm talking about like a five-hour flight endurance. We, we think we can maybe even get twice that on the platform that also has a fuel cell on it. So that really could be you know, revolutionary capability for, for the Air Force and for the Army and the other services. Sure. And you could just point out different things as we go along, like you can pick up the solar panels and just say this, that. Okay. Okay. So just I go ahead. So these are these are the flexible um, solar cells. They're made from material called gallium arsenide. Um, this is a, a different size uh, wafer. But basically how they're made is you can grow these, these solar cells on the wafer and then peel the solar cells off of the wafer and then reuse the wafer, which in the long run could potentially make them less expensive. You can see it's about like a aluminum foil, the consistency of, of the solar cell. This is the lithium ion battery. It's similar to, I think, like I said before, uh, uh, the, the battery that's in your cell phone or your laptop. And this fits in the battery bay that's open here, just like this. This weighs a couple of pounds, um, which is a significant fraction of the whole vehicle, which only weighs about 13 pounds. This is the, the solar arrays that we, that we uh, and in this case, really just glued onto the surface. There are wires under there that, that go to these power electronics. We also designed these power electronics for the vehicle. 
Um, and I guess just one other thing to point out is, as, as you can you can see, uh, the wing is actually three sections. The tail also comes off, so this just gets to the point that the vehicle can be assembled in the field and hand launched, which is really why it demonstrates or why it delivers a, a valuable capability to the to the military.